Krishna Bhaktai Tad Bhaktai Namo Namaha Vanshakantru Vyasya Kripa Sindhu Bevicha Paddhanam Bhavanim Do Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitharan Sriyadvayar Gadadhar Shriva Sargaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare First of all, I offer my most humble obeisances to our beloved Shri Gurudev Gita Prabhu Om Vishnu Bhag Association of Shri Bhakti Ram Singh Narayan Shri Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my most humble pranam to our Brahman Govardhan. And thirdly, I offer my most humble obeisances to all, all of you assembled guests, devotees, and the whole audience held by Gurudev Bhakti Dhar Siddhanti <coughs> So, Maharaj Ji uh, requested me to speak some words. I am uh, completely amazed and taken back. I don't know what to, what to do, what to speak, but however, with my Gurudev's mercy, I will try to speak some words. Um, <clears throat> this today is the 28th of December. There was the disappearance day of uh, one of a prominent Acharya in our group on the line, Shri Jiu Goswami. And um, <clears throat> we all know Rupa Goswami, Sarata Goswami, um, but also Shri Jiu Goswami, he was very um, important in our uh, lineage, in our Guru Bharata. Why? Because when Shri Rupa Goswami and Shri Sarata Goswami um, yeah, when they were not here anymore, uh, Shila Jyoga Swami was the guardian of our uh, Rupa Nuga Guru Varga. And uh, the next generation, think of Shila Narutam, Das Thakur, Shinavash, and Shaman Prabhu, they all, these three were there and they wanted to be, become disciples of Shila Jyoga Swami. And Shila Jyoga Swami, uh, although he did not formally um, initiate any disciple, so he did not formally accept any disciple. No, he had disciples. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he did yeah. not uh, initiate these three. He, uh, yes. he didn't initiate these three. But after Goswami's they left, Shri Goswami was Guru in Vrindavan and was having many disciples. Okay, so he sent Shri Narottam Dashaku to be um, initiated by Shri Narottam Goswami. Um, Shri Narottam Acharya was initiated by Shri Narottam Goswami. And Shri Shaman Prabhu, he was initiated by Shri Haridayan Chalanya. So, <coughs> Shri Narottam Goswami, um, one time when he was with Shri Narottam Goswami, um, there was uh, this great personality who came. He came to visit Shri Rupa Swami. I think his name was Varunhaji, the one who came to visit Shri Rupa Swami to edit Varunhaji. Yes, so Shri Varunhaji, he came and he was asking Shri Rupa Swami, Hey, Rupa Swami, what are you doing? What are you writing? And then Shri Rupa Swami showed him a piece of what he was writing, Hakir Shan Sindhu. And then he said, No, oh, but I can do better. I will edit it for you. And uh, Rupa Swami, he said, He, uh, he said, Okay. Varunhaji then edited the piece which Shri Rupa Swami wrote and then um, he, he corrected him. So afterwards, when Shri Rupa Swami came back, uh, Shri Rupa Swami asked him, hey, what did you do? And Shri Rupa Swami said, yes, I corrected him because he was editing your uh, written piece and yeah, it was not, it was not in line with Shastra. And Shri Rupa Swami, he became not pleased. Shri Jiva Swami, and he sent him away. He said, I don't want to see you. Please go. And Shri Jiva Swami was very um, yeah, disheartened. He was thinking, what's this? And he left. And he was in very um, uh, bad condition. He wasn't eating, drinking, and he just was lying down. And um, yeah, he, he, he was in very bad condition. And uh, Shri Sanatana Swami, who was also uh, present at the time, he, after a couple of times, he heard that there is one Baba also, because the residents of Braj would call him Baba, uh, but then he's, uh, the residents of uh, Brindavan told him, oh Baba, Baba, and there is another Baba here by, he's doing very severe tapasya, he is not eating, not drinking, you should see him. And Shri Rasa came, and he looked, and he 
was thinking, who is it? And yeah, it was Shila Swami. And then, uh, because also Shila Swami is his nephew also, uh, both Rupa Sanatan are the uncles of Shila Swami. So then he, um, because Vaishnav is always, um, they have a soft heart. They, their heart is um, melting whenever they see the state of every living entity, what to speak about Shila Swami. So then Shila Sanat Muslami, he took Shiva Jiva with him and brought him to Rupa Swami and then everything was reconciled. Um, <clears throat> Shiva Gurudev, whenever there would be a um, disappearance day or appearance day of Shiva Jiva Swami, uh, wherever he was throughout the world, he would al always speak Harit Kata about Shiva Jiva Swami. And um, one time, Shiva Gurudev, he was telling about the contribution of Shiva Jiva Swami. Um, we all, all know that Shri Rupa Swami has written Bhakti Rizan Sindhu, Ujjwal Nilmani, etc. But Guru Deo was making a point, he said that we should not think that Rupa Swami wrote everything um, because without the contribution of Shri Rupa Swami, the commentaries he wrote on Bhakti Rizan Sindhu, we should respect all our Guru Varga because all of them have a unique and special contribution as we need all of them to bestow on mercy on us. And Guru Deo, whenever he was traveling the world, uh, whether in Holland, or in Brazil, or Mexico, or America, wherever he went, um, always when he was sitting on the Vyasa Asan, and all the uh, kirtan was going on, and he was sitting at the Vyasa Asan and looking at everybody, uh, he was scanning everyone. And everybody in the audience would think, hey, Guru Deo is looking at me. Like, there was an assembly of maybe thousand people, but everybody got the same feeling. Oh, Guru Deo is only looking at me. He was just looking at everybody and scanning them. You know? And then whenever Guru Deo uh, would start with Harikatha, he would always say, by Krishna's arrangement, we are all here. And I came <coughs> here to remind all of you that you are not this body. You are the soul. And the the words which Guru Deo was using, it was, it was so simple, but the points he was, he was making were so grave. Because, like Maharaj told, Sri Guru Deo and also our, <coughs> our Acharyas, they left their beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham to come here into the Western countries and all the countries to preach for all of us. And Sri Guru Deo, when he was speaking, he said, I have this jolly this basket full of uh, jewels and diamonds with me. I brought it all the way from Brash to all of you. But if you do not want it, no worries, I just take it back to Brash. And Shri Guru Deo, whenever he was visiting in the Western countries, also in Holland, he came um, in 2007, that's when I first met him. Um, he was the first, um, yeah, the first point he was making, which I heard, was that he was speaking about Sri Jagannath Rathyatra and he was telling in his beautiful voice in Hindi, I cannot replicate it because Gurudev is Gurudev. But he said, Agar tum Radhaji Krishna go apni mein, if, you want to, if you want them to sit in your heart, then you have to clean your heart. Ride ko saaf karna You have to throw out all the dust, the stones, with whatever is there, you should throw it out. And only then, and only then, you can uh, let Radharani and Krishna sit in your heart, only then. And he was then explaining the Leela of Sri Gundi Chamarjan, how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would assemble all devotees, give them a broom and a bucket, and he would put a challenge for them. Who can clean the most, who can accumulate the most waste, will get a reward from me. So Gurudev, whenever he saw all of us in the Western countries, he would do European festivals in, um, in Holland, Kaitan, 2005, in Italy, in Germany, all the devotees who have been there know this, that on the last day, whenever he would depart, like uh, we will have in two days, Gurudev was also always um, giving us a warm and comforting words. Uh, the lecture is called Closing Words. And Guru Deo would always say, this was then in Germany 2006, he was saying, don't be weak. Don't think that I am not with you. I am with you. Chant your Anik regularly. Chant your Hari 
know my Gregory. Don't think that because you do not see me, I am not there. I am there for you. I am there in every picture on the on the altar. I am there. I am with you, closer to you than the air you breathe. I am there. Don't think that I'm not there. And Guru Dev will always say that please associate regularly. Read my books. If you have a question, just open my book, meditate on me, and the answer will come throughout. Uh, maybe a devotee who tells you something, or you go to a satsang where the topic is spoken of the point you you have in your uh, in your mind, or you uh, see a lecture, some way or another your doubt or the question you have will come to you. Like also, I had personally that I had some doubts about myself, about my my progress, uh, my bhakti, am I doing the good thing, am I, what I, am I doing wrong, so many doubts, so many problems, so many stress I had. But then this morning, Vijay Prabhu, he was uh, um, discussing Madhuri Kadamani and he gave the Eldrich explanation. Three hours. <laughs> yes, three hours. It was, it, was, uh, it was very brutal, but the, the points Vijay Prabhu was making, if I were to hear, Stop, one stop, stop. <laughs> and it's going and going and going. <laughs> it was very brutal for me. Prabhuji, uh, he was going all these points, and I felt like a dagger just going inside, making a big hole. I was thinking, oh, what did I do all these years? I just wasted my time. This I did wrong, this I did wrong. So, in the same way, whenever we feel weak, we come to these retreats, we listen to Harikata, <coughs> Maharaji, the Salahus. If not, then the other devotees. We associate for one thing only, to stay strong. And uh, coming to these retreats, um, attending programs, festivals, wherever you are, it's it's a balm. It's a it's a yeah. How do you say a refreshment? A battery charge. Because I speak from my own experience. A couple of months uh, have not been easy. Uh, very less at some. Um, no regular programs, and then you get you get yeah um, weak, you get uh, doubts in your head. Am I doing good? Am I not doing good? So I'm thankful to be here, to be able to got the opportunity to attend this retreat, to listen to the Harikata of Maharaji, of Vijay Prabhu, and to see all of you because seeing all of you is making me happy. Uh, the first day when I saw Nalini, she was asking me, "Hey, how are you?" I said, "Yes, I'm fine." Being here in the association of all devotees, seeing them, being with them, I'm happy. And then she said, yeah, you always say that, say something else. I said, yes, but that's the truth. If I'm at home, I'm with my friends, families, colleagues, etc. But they do not give me the fulfillment I have when I am here or at any program. So my departing words are, whenever you got the opportunity to go to a satsang, to uh, attend the festival, please do it. Because it will give you the power, the strength which you need for those times when there is nothing. And of course, you have on YouTube so many lectures of Shri Guru Dev, you have all the books of Ad Guru Varda. And fortunately, when the Sahus come, like Maharaji, then we are having a great festival. So, yeah, that is uh, what I wanted to speak about. Maharaji uh, overwhelmed me because I did not uh, expect to speak. Yeah, this is my uh, humble request to all of you. Thank you for your attention. Hare Krishna.
if they have song book, Manale Kahona Gaurapata. So they can follow the game. Manale Oh, my God. 
so much related to the verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Srimad Bhagavatam is what? Is a form of Krishna. Yes? And Bhagavad Gita is the speech of Krishna, the lecture of Krishna, the song sung by Krishna. <coughs> so, generally we say, which is true, Bhagavad Gita is on foundation level because it speaks about Sambandha. Foundation has to be very strong. If the foundation is weak, then the house, building or the palace is also very weak. <clears throat> so, Sambandha Tattva supposed to be very strong to build a palace of Abhideha practice on a foundation. That's why we have sadhana bhakti, bhav bhakti and prema bhakti. Foundation is very strong. Bhagavad Gita speaks about sambandha. The difference between, not only the difference between atma and sharir, means body and soul, but the words in Bhagavad Gita, the shlokas in Bhagavad Gita also speaks about Abhideha and Parivajan. It's not only Sambandha Tattva. Any composition, any song by our Acharyas, <coughs> any scripture, <coughs> all compromise of Sambandha, Abhideha and Parivajan. Samadha means relationship, Abhideya means the practice, and Priyojan means the goal. No. If Krishna started speaking from second chapter, hearing the words or the surrender mood of Arjun, Shishyaste Shadimam Tam Pratitam, I am your disciple, please guide me, I am so confused. And Krishna, he started speaking from there, from that point on. First of all, I did ask this question many places, because this is a lecture from Gurudev. How many people died on the battlefield of Kurukshetra? Any number in Bhagavad Gita? This is going to be very good for your seminar. <laughs> if you ask the audience, how many people died? There were 18 Akshani Sena, means 18 million soldiers <coughs> on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. But that was from the Krishna side, given to Duryodhan. But any number, any guess from the audience? 660 million? He's saying 660 million people died. Any other guess? No guess? Are you kuchvi bol do kya kar kuchvi? Just say anything. According to Gurudev, not even one person died in Kurukshetra. <laughs> That's the... Uh, even in messages, people writing. Because they heard my lecture earlier. <laughs> that's not my, that's Gurudev's version. Not one person died. If we say, this many million, that many million died, then we are not believing the words of Krishna where he is saying, huh, soul never died. <laughs> so no one died there. And in some countries, they banned Bhagavad Gita saying, what kind of God is worshipping? He is promoting violence. 
his devotee. He don't want to fight. And devotee inspiring his Lord saying, Prabhu, no violence please. And your Lord is saying, yes, violence. Because they have no insight on Bhagavad Gita. Because in that violence, no one died. So in the beginning, Krishna started speaking about foundation, samanda, and then is going further, abhideha. Tesham satat yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam ye namam upyantite. Abhideha. Yes. Ananya chintamam jejana paripasate tesham nitya bhuktanam yokshe mahamim. Abhideha. Whoever worships me one pointedness, I guarantee I will take care of all scarcity and I will preserve whatever they have. I will take care of everything. This is Abhideha. So, so many verses been said about Abhideha. And then he said, then Krishna said, <laughs> Krishna said about Prayojan. What is that Prayojan? Manmana man bhakto madhyaji mam namaskur sarva dharman paritajji mam ekam sharanam bhaja. This is Prayojan. So Bhagavad Gita is not only Sambandha. If we go inside Bhagavad Gita, especially the Bhagavad Gita introduced by Gurudev with commentaries of Vishnu Chakra Thakur, my goodness, you will see. It's not only Sambandha, it's Abhideha and Prayojan is there. Many people, in related to this, many people get confused. Bhishma Pitama, the grandsire Bhishma, fought with Krishna. And Bhishma is considered to be as one of the Mahajans. There are 12 Mahajans. Swambu, Kripa. How many Mahajans? No. Name. Who will tell? Tadeshwari? What's the word? Yesterday? Finish that? No? Ram? I don't know. Show for me the names. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Madhu Maharaj, Vyasadeva, Kapil Dev, uh, Yavaraj, Vishnu Tama, Sudhya Goswami, uh, Bali Maharaj, Jana Padaj, well done. Twelve more, yeah? So when, if we learn Shlok, then we don't miss out anything. Swambhu Narad Shambhu Kumar Kapilomanu Pralat Janaka Bhishma Bali Vyasaki Vyam. Twelve. So Bhishma Kitama is pure devotee. And he is fighting with Krishna. And Krishna inspired Arjun to shoot arrows on Bhishma. And Bhishma is lying on the bed of arrows. Right. What kind of violence is this to the Jeevas? Uh, to your devotee, Bhishma. Is this his violence? <clears throat> but if you read the commentaries of Vishnu Chakra Thakur, they will be amazed. It's not violence. What is this? And it's so even, uh, I mean, I can't even tell this in this audience. It's so intimate. But you see how Vishnu Shakutakur describing this piercing Vishnu with the arrows is like a love marks. When conjugal making love, the love marks. 
Who can go to this point? <laughs> it's so intimate. Therefore, if you read Bhagavad Gita with the commentaries, it will take you to some other level of understanding Bhagavad Gita. So, Bhagavad Gita is not only foundation level, it also speaks about Abhideha, very strong practice. <coughs> and very strong prayojan, the Vena object. So, these beautiful words. Param Rishta Nivartanti. When one develops higher taste, automatically the lower taste can diminish. No need to tell the lower taste to go away. Just like sunrise, when there is sunrise, there is no need to tell the darkness or the fog or those creatures in the mode of ignorance to go away. They immediately Immediately, with the rising of sun, they immediately can diminish or they get sleep, they hibernate themselves, and darkness is over. Because of rising of sun. <coughs> and that was a question in Srimad Bhagavatam. Parik Shuddha Goswami, he uttered one words. Kechit Kevalya Bhaktaya Vasude Prayanam when there is sunrise, all creatures in a mode of ignorance and darkness, everything just goes away. So, kechit kevalya bhaktaya, only with kevala bhakti, which is another name of pure bhakti, one can easily get rid of the Sins which are rooted in the heart is easy to uh, destroy the sins, is easy to repent on the sins, but how to take out the desire which is rooted in the heart? Shuddha Goswami said, only by Kechit Kevalya Bhaktaya, only with pure devotion, pure bhakti, which has so many names, Kevala Bhakti, Nirmala Bhakti, Shuddha Bhakti, Amla Bhakti, Pure Bhakti. <clears throat> when pure bhakti starts, immediately all this unwanted desires, these four defects, what other day he was saying, what are four defects? Surup Brahm? Surup Brahm? Hidden Dorbalyam? Asat Krishna and Aparad? Everything. Sukriti Uttha, Dushkriti Uttha, all this unearthed goes away. Only with the process of your bhakti. How Bhagavad Gita is related to Bhagavatam? Let us hear this. So keep it this hand. Higher taste and the lower taste. So let us come to the example of Dhruva Maharaj. You all have heard so many times about Dhruva Maharaj, right? Five year young boy. <coughs> so firm as his name, Dhruva. So determined. Going to forest. Five year young boy without any other consideration. I want to worship Lord. For what reason? The affection of his father. To get? The affection of his father. No. King 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 to get what? King kingdom. Kingdom. To get a kingdom or a throne bigger than any of his ancestors. What to speak of his father? That was our motive, the aim of through Maharaj being going to forest. Not to worship Bhagwan. So see how Dhru Maharaj giving a very good teaching here. And this also shows everyone going Vrindavan Dham is not of the same reason. Some have fight at home, I'm going Vrindavan. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to buy an apartment there. Only 50,000 euros. Apartment. 
it is so cheap to it's so easy i mean sorry it's so easy to survive there it's not expensive as in europe grocery everything is affordable so that's go in now my boyfriend my girlfriend left me i go in now what is the intent behind going to the one that's most important so always keep one formula in the head aapne hindi priti vansha tar bole kaam and krishna hindi priti vansha dhare prem naam what is the meaning kobil tar dear shri everyone must learn this words because in our daily practices eating sleeping whatever we have to consider if this has been done even speaking hari katha even singing and even the desire to speak i am saying if i am doing this this action is to please my senses or to please the senses of the lord here comes the formula to check on one self it is the best formula for every practitioner every sadhaka and bhakti for every movement for every action you know and as much as we are following this formula <coughs> we are close to krishna in the same proportion otherwise we are just dwelling in satisfying the urges of my mind because it gives so much satisfaction satisfaction doesn't come to the body because body is a dead matter satisfaction has nothing to do with the soul because soul is nothing to do with this it's just all about the mind i am suffering or i am not suffering i am sad and i am happy this is all just a uh, stone house of all these features is just mind it has nothing to do with body it has nothing to do with the soul it's just different positioning of mind anyone who understand this is pandita learn it actions performed to please my senses and the urges of my mind and if the intent is myself my own mind then it is what it is dust and if it is same actions performed for pleasure of krishna then it is pain and we gathering accumulating that much proportion of pain so dhru maharaj going for us not to worship krishna with a firm determination even being stopped by naraji why are you going there you don't get good palace you don't get nice mattress to sleep you don't get good food to eat you don't get many guards there to protect you but he was very firm that's why his name is dhruv dhruv means determined dhruv anyway i'm not speaking the dhruv story but just give an intro 
when Dhruv Maharaj was in the forest after performing severe austerities for six months. He had darshan of the Lord. So beautiful. And Dhruv Maharaj is praying to Supreme Lord in 12, 14 verses. <clears throat> in all these verses, one beautiful prayer which Gurudev used to like so much and wants everyone to utter this verse because Gurudev used to ask devotees to stand up and speak on Dhruva Maharaj. And no matter if you're speaking everything, but if you miss skip that verse, Gurudev said, you skip the important point. What is that verse? Very nice. Clapping for the God. <laughs> this is called speaker. One should be fluent with the verses. The topic what we are going to speak if we are not even aware of what I am speaking. And I don't know any reference to support my speaking. Then it is just, that speaking is not speaking. I am just doing for pleasing my mind. That means I have some other motives. So, sthani vilashi sthiti tapasthaham tam praptuvan dev varang gayam. Kacham vichinpe apidivaratnam Swami Kirtarthas ki varam nayachi. Gurudev was very fond of hearing this. And any speaker speaking, Gurudev saying, What is that verse? And everyone is looking his way. Which verse? That verse. And unless one speaks this, he is not satisfied. He wanted to hear this. So, what is the meaning? Okay, you tell the meaning. <coughs> so Dhrumaraj is saying, Sthana Vilasi Tapasi Sthitoha. I was situated in performing austerities for Sthana Vilasi with a desire to attain that place, means the throne where none of my ancestors have sit, uh, sit. Before. You said before. Tham Praptavan Devamuni Nirguya. But now I've obtained you, who is even quite unattainable for the deva, the demigod, Muna India, and the best of the Muni. Kacham Vichinvan Api Divya Ratnam. I was looking for broken pieces of glass, but I have obtained a diamond. Sami Kriya tells me, Oh Lord, I am fully satisfied now. Karam Nayachi, I don't want any boon from you. I came in this forest for austerities. But I was seeking broken pieces of glasses. Whereas by seeing you, I'm condemning my intent to come here. My intent to come in forest was to sit on a throne where never any of my ancestors have ever sat before. I want to attain that throne. But now seeing you as Divya Ratnam, diamond, a very special Ratna. All other positions, means all other thrones are what? Broken pieces of glass. Param Dishta Yavarshanti. Understand? Now through Maharaj attain higher taste. Please note down, I'm going to ask. No one is going to tell you this. <coughs> this is called churning of Shastras. This is called relating Shastras. <coughs> How we compare the words of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, related to the characters of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is one, one prospect 
as of Gita Jayanti, I was saying, they are innumerable rays from the sun. So there are many, many prospects, from many prospects we describe Bhagavad Gita. One ray is, I just began saying, Saman Abhide Prayoja, this is one ray of that sun. And if you elaborate on this, then you cover all the shlokas, the important ones. This is one ray. The other ray is, Chaturmida Vajanti Maam, Jana Sukritana Arjuna, four types of people approach me. What four types? Art, Art, Jigyasu, Artharthi, Jnani, Chavad, Sabha. One who are in distress, one who is in materially motivated, one who is inquisitive, one who is learning. Four varieties, types of people approach me. This is another way. And now you compare this with Bhagavatam. Yeah? So, Bhagavad Gita is like a sun. As Shiman Bhagavatam is also compared to as a sun. Puran Arak Adunita Krishna Sadham Upagatade Dharma Gyanandini Saha Kalo Nashtam Dishamesham Puran Arak Adunita Bhagavatam is compared to as Bhaskar, as sun. So there are many, many <coughs> rays. And just pick one ray. So Param Dishta Nivartante. Dhru Maharaj was having a lower taste. And what was that lower taste? I want to sit on that throne. Which throne? Where none of my ancestors have ever sat before. Lower taste. Is that lower taste? When Dhru Maharaj is saying so, that these desires which I was having in my heart, these are compared to as broken pieces of glasses. If Dhru Maharaj is saying this, that means he is making all other thrones as broken pieces of glasses. In other words, he is making all those thrones as lower taste. What are those lower tastes? What are those thrones he rejected? He condemned those. The position of becoming the king of the demigods, Indra Loka. Even the Singhasan, the throne of Brahmaji, also broken piece of glass. Brahman. Even to become the king of this material planet. That's also broken piece of glass. And to become the king of hellish planets, also broken piece of glass. To attain all kind of perfections, also broken pieces of glass. And even to attain liberation, broken piece of glass. Understand? In comparison with what? Now Dhru Maharaj got higher taste. Because when Dhru Maharaj spoke this verse. When? Not, not before seeing the Lord. That's the important point. After seeing the beauty of Lord. The word says Dhru Maharaj is adoring the beauty of the Lord. Just like he's going to drink that beauty with his eyes. What is the comparison given? Drinking with the eyes? Drinking has to be done with the mouth, the lips. But word says Dhru Maharaj, adoring the beauty of the Lord and wants to drink that beauty. He's adoring in such a <coughs> with such excitement that he wants to drink that beauty with his eyes. And that point, Dhru Maharaj understood, I have to give up. Not I have to give up, already given up, diminished, faded, the lower taste. Means all other thrones are lower taste in comparison with the higher taste. And what is that higher taste? I am seeing the Lord, the beauty of the Lord. And that's why he said, Kacham Vichinte Abhitivya Ratnam. This is transcendental jewel, the beauty of Krishna, beauty of the Lord is transcendental jewel. So, moment he developed the higher taste. All other became lower taste. Or in other words, all other became 
ब्रोकन पीसेस ऑफ ग्लासेस इज ब्रोकन पीसेस ऑफ ग्लास ऑफ एनी यूज a cup of glass in a kitchen is of so much use you can drink juice you can have lemonade water whatever but it slip from your hand and fall on the ground and what are you going to do with broken piece of glass throw away and be careful when you picking those broken piece of glass be careful because what will happen cut cut And if you have those broken piece of glass, will you flush in your bathroom? You going to trash in your kitchen somewhere? It has to be thrown far away. Param Vishnu ni varthante. Moment one develops higher taste, all other becomes broken pieces of glass. You know, a very refined. a very important formula this verse and with this verse i can connect this verse with ru maharaj with prahlad maharaj with amrish maharaj with vridasur and even with ma prabhu and even with krishna just one verse but you should know how to drive If you know how to drive, you can go left, right, wherever you want, detour, whatever. You know, if you don't know how to drive, then it's difficult. At a stop sign, you're moving and you just hitting someone. Param dishta ni varthan thi. It was year back. I was meditating on this verse, and when I was meditating on this verse, in one of my Bhagavad Gita's, I was trying to relate this verse. If you meditate on the words of Bhagavad Gita, and then trying to relate this with Shri Mad Bhagavata and Chaitanya Chaitamrit, you will see so much comparison. And then I got this clip. Param Vishnu Nivartha. They have Dhruva Maharaj condemning those high positions. The throne of Brahma has broken piece of glass. You understand why I am saying this? What is the purpose of Dhruva Maharaj going for us? To attain a throne where never any of my ancestors ever sat before. That means his father Udan Pal. That means his father, Swambhu Manu. That means his father, Brahma. And what he is saying, Karchan Vichin pe apni din pe ratna. All these are broken pieces of glasses. That means even the throne of Brahma, the position of Brahma, is not that easy to attain. Not that easy. If anyone following hundred lifetimes of purely Following the duties of a national dharma, hundred lifetimes, then one get the position of Brahma. Hundred lifetimes, purely without any mistake and fault. So it's not easy. But that Brahma path, the position of the throne of Brahma is broken piece of glass, which is not, but in comparison with a diamond. Understand? The position of King Uttan Pad, being the ruler of the whole planet, is not less. But yes, it is less in comparison with the darshan of the Lord. The position of Swayam Bhu Manu, you know, Manu, you know, Manu. That's why we all call Manushya, because we are. Descendant of Manu, and that's why we we know, we are known as Manushya. You know Hindi word Manushya because we are descendant of Manu. We are not our grand our forefathers were not monkeys. <laughs> It was Darwin whose forefather was monkey. <laughs> His forefather. <laughs> 
and Kumar. <laughs> he produced this, he brought up this theory, Darwin theory. And Srila Prabhupada used to smash <laughs> stupid nonsense. Our forefathers, Swayam Bhumanu, the creation started with that's the order of Supreme Lord to Brahma to create. And Brahma just started creating with his mind, Mansing Srishti. But it was not functioning nicely. And then a male and female emanate from the body of Brahma, uh, Swambhu Manu. Sorry, from Brahma. Swambhu Manu and his wife, Shatrupa. And with the union of Shatrupa and Swambhu Manu, then this Mathur Srishti started. And they will get three daughters and two sons. Three daughters, Akuti, Prasuti, Devhuti. And two sons, Priyaprat Maharaj and Uttanpal. Akuti got married with Ruchi Prajapati. Prasuti got married with Daksh Prajapati. And Devhuti got married with Karnam Rishi. And then they start expanding, expanding. So we are descendants of Manu Maharaj. That's why we are known as Manushyas. <coughs> so the darshan of Supreme Lord is Divya Ratnam. And all other positions are what? Broken pieces of glass. Understand up to this point? Clear? Now, after seeing Supreme Lord in front of him, Guru Maharaj further said, one more beautiful voice. She knows. She is getting excited to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't know the first line? You know the other lines? Bhakti mai pravartam toi me prasango guya tantra matma amla shainam. So first he said, all other thrones are broken piece of glass. But now Dhanu Maharaj is saying, he also made Paradrishta Nivartante. He even made the darshan of Supreme Lord. What? In a low level, as compared to? What is the meaning of this words? Bhakti Mai Paravartam. I want the association of your pure devotees who are always immersed in speaking your topics. Krishna can ask Guru Maharaj, wait a minute, Guru. Are you not happy seeing you? Of course I am. But what are you saying? You want the association of my devotees? You're not saying I want association of you. Guru Maharaj is not seeking the association of the Lord. Whereas he wants association of his pure devotees. That means Param Drishta Nivartante. The higher taste is not that the darshan of the Lord is not a higher taste. Of course it is. But in comparison with association of pure devotees of Lord, the darshan of Lord is lower taste. In comparison with it is offensive to say the darshan of Lord is lower taste. How it's possible? So I'm not saying the darshan of Lord is have no use, but in comparison with the association of the pure devotees who are immersed in relating the topics of Krishna. You will get to know more and more and you, we, we can receive bhakti from them. In comparison with that, then the darshan of Lord is less and the association of devotees is more. Dhruva Maharaj is establishing this point. Dhruva Maharaj is establishing this point. Huh. So, on that scale, darshan of Lord and the association of your devotees. The scale of darshan of your devotees get more what? High. 
and darshan of Lord become light. Parad Vishta Nivartanti. You understand? Dhruv Maharaj is establishing this point with his own prayers, with his own translation, uh, with his own prayers and stutis. Now coming to Vrittasur. Mm, very important. Which scriptures describe the glories of Vrittasur? Padmapura? Upanishad? Where Vrittasur is mentioned? Krita? Which scripture Vrittasur is mentioned? You heard Vita Sur? This scripture? Yes, that's simple, but I'm confused. <laughs> Shiva Bhagavatam. But Masya Puran describes. What is Shiva Bhagavatam? Bhagavatam is a scripture where the past time of Vrita Sur is mentioned. Yatra Kritra Gayatri Varnate Dharma Vistara. Shri Vrita Sur Vadupatte Shrimad Bhagavatam Vishyate. The scripture which describes the killing of Vrita Sur, that is Shrimad Bhagavatam. So Shrimad Bhagavatam is known as the great scripture where the killing of Vrita Sur is mentioned. Who is demon in his body, by his body? But who is so glorious with his words? Body is demonic, demon. But what he is praying? That is more important. We can't compare Vrita Sur being demonic body as compared to Kamsa, demonic, Vinayakashipu, demonic. And Ravan, demonic. You know? Can't compare that. So you think Ravan was illiterate, unintelligent? Very intellectual. Ten heads. That means not only just for fashion, he used to have ten <laughs> Brahmaji had Brahmaji had four head. Ravan had ten head. Means whatever he is thinking, he is thinking from ten heads. Like in a meeting you need at least ten people to discuss something. <laughs> because ten head works together. And we come to a very good conclusion. In Ravan, <laughs> he don't need any meetings because already ten heads are there. <coughs> So one who thinks with ten head, the Shannon, Ravan, he knew the Vedas, you can imagine, he knew the Shastras. And, it, and he's descendant of Kulastrishi, glorious. He's descendant of Kulastrishi. of nine planets. You know? But Ravan has he captured the nine planets in his palace, <laughs> binding them with the ropes. And Ravan ordered them, situate yourself to bring all good fortune and auspicious for me. O Saturn, Shani, sit there. O Jupiter, sit there. Imagine. All nine plants were shaking. When Ravan used to raise his eyebrows, personified death under his feet. <coughs> Brahma, everyone 
used to tremble. They were like demigods were in his kitchen cutting vegetables. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's true. It's true. They engaged all demigods. He engaged all demigods. So cook for me, sing for me. And nine planets were working under his supervision, and he was so much knowledgeable. He he wrote. He composed Shiv Tantra, Shiv Tantra Stotram. If you read that, wonderful verses, Shiv Tantra Stotram, you can understand the intellect of Rama. So much learning. <coughs> you know, I heard one story. I don't know how, how much bona fide it is. <coughs> one person was narrating this. That when Ram and Lakshman, when they were in their camp, and were planning, making a plot to how we are going to attack next day, Vibhishan told, "Yagya brings all auspiciousness, <clears throat> but the priest in the yagya has to be very, you know, super intellectual and intelligent person." So Prabhu Shri Ram asked Vishnu, "Who can be the best priest? We can invite him." Vishnu said, "As far as my knowledge, there can be no one greater than Ram, the best priest. He is descendant of Pulastra, and Vishnu is brother of Ram. Understand?" So Shri Ram asked. Can Ravan perform our yagya? And Vibhishan heart melted to hear this. What are you saying? Everything is happening because of him. We are arranging a war against him, and you want to invite your enemy to do yagya for you? There is the glory of Ram, the vision of Ram. His enemy, no doubt, but is also very learned and also knows all the Vedas. So Ram said, "No problem. Bring him. Ask him to come." And the proposal went to Rama. Prabhu Shri Ram wants a yagya. Yagya for what? Victory over you. <laughs> And how bold Ravan was, he accepted the proposal. But he told the dutas, the messengers, but yagya cannot be accomplished if the wife is not sitting left on the left side of you know, Ram, and Sita is in my custody. So I am ordering, just go and tell Sita, my chariot is ready. She has to sit on the chariot because of the yagya. Because yagya cannot be complete if wife is not sitting. So tell Sita to get ready. My chariot is going to take her. I am the priest to go in yagya, and after it is over, she has to come back. So powerful, huh? And it actually it happened. So I am just suddenly telling. I heard this. I never read this. It makes little sense because it's describing the glories of Ram and the glories of Ravan, also being so learned. So we are only having the one line prospect of how powerful Ravan was. So he arranged Sita Devi to go and sit next to Ravan. And Rama is chanting mantras. He don't have to open his book for the mantras. He knew all the mantras. He made this yagya fulfilled. And when the yagya was over, it's a duty. The host has to pay obeisances to Rama. 
Shri Ram is so polite and humble. He paid obeisances to Rama, not seeing him as his enemy. But right now he is playing a role of a priest. He paid obeisances to Rama. And he said, there is a custom after the yagya, one is supposed to give donation. So, oh Ravan, what can I give you? Ravan said, huh, what you give me? Poor beggars, you are not even in your kingdom. You don't have any belongings with you. Ram said, I promise you. When my when my task is over, I am going to give you that donation. Right now I don't have anything with me. But if you ask something from me, if I can arrange, I will try my best. But after my task is over, what is my task? To kill you. <laughs> and to, <laughs> then, see how they are speaking with each other. And Vivishan, Sugriv, everyone is shocked what they are, what they are speaking. <laughs> <laughs> then I am going to give you. Rama said, well, <clears throat> my Lanka is full of gold. Sone ki Lanka. His palace was gold, the palace. Everywhere is gold and gold and gold. He, he said, I don't need anything because in terms of, you know, as we hear Kunti Devi saying, Jan Ashwari Shuta Shri Jan means his high birth. He is descendant of Kulastrishi. High birth, born in high family, high class family. Ashwari opulence, goodness. Ravan has so much opulence. Then I told demigods are cutting vegetables in his kitchen. <coughs> Nine planets are arrested in his prison house. <coughs> the palace full of gold. No scarcity at all. And in terms of learning, goodness, he knows all the Vedas, he knows all the Tantras, he knows all the Shlokas. And beauty, Sri, he was very beautiful and powerful. Janmashri, Shruta, Shri, all four good qualities. All the four opulences were there. So Rama said, well, I don't need anything. Ram said, but my yajna will not be complete. And the purpose of my yajna will not be complete. I want my purpose to get complete. That's why I invited you for yajna, for performing yajna. Ravan said, well, if you want, really want to give me something, then I pray you, when, you're, when you get accomplished with your task, you understand? This is the dialogue happening. <laughs> when your task is accomplished and I'm dying, because that's the only purpose. When I'll be dying, my donation from you is, I want you to stand in front of me. I want to leave my body seeing you. Rama said this. <coughs> and Sri Ram smiled. He said, yes, that's going to happen. So right now playing a different role, but when he went to Lanka, then again fight. What a mystery, eh? And so much Mariada. Mariada for his enemies also. <coughs> That's Mariada Pushwakam now. You know? So there are so many details in Ramayana. Because Ramayana, written by Valmiki Ji, and there are almost 10, 15 versions of Ramayana, written by great saints. But the base of all those Ramayans is Valmiki Ramayana. <coughs> so, a great description, narration of Ram Lila. So, coming to the point, we heard the glories of Ravan, how intellectual and you know intelligent Ravan. A Jarasan in Krishna Lila, very intelligent. Krishna himself said this. The Jarasan is so difficult. He asked Buddha, Buddha, how I have to kill Jarasan? It's so difficult. He attacked on me 17 times. And it's so difficult to defeat him. Buddha, you are the best of the ministers. Jarasan is very intellectual. So Ravan has so much knowledge. 
Hiranyakashipu, my goodness, his brother Hiranyaksh died. His wives were crying and Hiranyakashipu giving what? Samanga Gyan. He's giving so much knowledge. If you read Seven Canto Bhagavatam, Bhutehi. Amongst the ten symptoms of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhutehi means desires. Where desires, I mean, not desires, but uh, um, how to describe this? The comparison of the intent of Pralad Maharaj and the intent of Hiranyakashipu, quite opposite. Hiranyakashipu is speaking so much Shastras to the wives of his brother, Hiranyakashipu. Why are you lamenting? Why are you crying? For body? It's not body. Soul. Soul never dies. Na jayati mrite va kadachu. Hiranyakashipu speaking Shastras there. That's why Shri Prabhupada used to say and Shri Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Goswami Mara used to say even demons can quote Shastras. How intelligent was Hiranyakashipu? How intelligent was Ravan? But the only point, Ravan, then what is the difference between Ram and Ravan? Being so learned, Ravan, so learned, with all opulences, the only point is, uh, he surrendered to the urges of his mind. And Ram is, one who is the master of the mind and Ravan who is the servant <coughs> Ravan is one who is the servant of the mind also heard Mandodri, the beautiful wife of Ravan very chaste lady so whenever there is a marriage ceremony, wedding I also did four or five weddings <coughs> from that book written by Sri Gopal Radha Goswami. There are nine couples we have to utter their names to make a very auspicious bond between uh, boy and girl getting married. Nine or ten. In those names there is also the name of Ravan and Mandodri. Mandodri very chaste. Very chaste lady. So Mandodri told her husband, Ravan, wait a minute. I'm hearing so much about the glories of Ram. I want to see him. Ravan said, How dare you say this? She said, No, I just want to see him. Here compares the comparison, the difference between Ravan and Ram. When Mandodri came, to see Ram, he was sitting outside his camp and was thinking of Sita. And Mandodri came from behind and Ram just saw the shadow of Mandodri, shadow of a woman. Just saw the shadow, not even the form. And even Ram, immediately Ram, he stood up and, you know, he moved around. Just seeing the shadow of them. And just by seeing the shadow, he addressed the shadow, Oh mother, who are you? And Mandodri said, I am Mandodri. And Ram greeted her. So a dialogue happened between them. That's not our right now. Uh, not the class about this. But Mandodri, when she came back to Ram, Ravan, Ravan said, what is the difference between me and Ram? Mandodri said, big difference. Ravan said, I know, I am king and he is like a poor beggar. Mandodri said, don't say that because he is the king of Ayodhya. Ravan said, I am so powerful. <coughs> Mandodri said, he is also powerful. He killed all your demons. He killed Taraka. Who had the and potency of 10,000 elephants. So in terms of your strength, Ram is not less. 
In terms of opulence, he is the king of Ayodhya. He is also king and he has so much opulence. In terms of knowledge, he is also not less. He is so knowledgeable. So in every comparison, whatever Ravan was speaking, very elaborate conversation. Whatever Ravan is speaking, Mandodri is defeating his point that Ram is great, Ram is superior, Ram is superior, Ram is superior. Whatever Ravan is coming with. And when he left with no other point, Mandodri said, you know, how he is superior to you? Just seeing my shadow, he addressed me as mother. Because he is one pointed, loving to his wife. And with you, even a beautiful wife like me, but you are lusting for Ram's wife. That means you are submissive to the urges of your mind. And Ram is the master of his mind. That's the difference. And Ravan, he became very angry and he left the palace. Even after having so much opulence and whatever, Ram is what? Atmindi Priti Vancha. Tante Bole. All his intent in is just to please his senses and the urges of his mind. Even though such great personality is Ravan. But he is defeated in this form. Understand? Param Drishta Nivartante. Why I raised this point? Vritasur. All demons are not same. Vritasur is also in a demon body. Ravan Hinya Kashipu comes from also demonic. But there is no comparison. Vritasur even in demonic body, but what they are speaking is more important. What they intend is more important. On the battlefield with the king of demigods, Indra. He is telling Indra, take your thunderbolt, take your weapon and kill me. I want to die. And to your surprise, Indra is asking, huh? I never saw anyone like this who is so willing to die. What is that? Because Vritasura know very well, my body right now is a demonic body and it is cursed body. This one which is called blessed life and then another which is called cursed life. Even though person is living but it is cursed life, he got a curse. And is living, enjoying or not enjoying but the curse. Yes, Ashwatthama is still alive. Ashwatthama is still alive but is living a cursed life. Parikshit Maharaj was also in the womb of his mother. And Ashwatthama, he showed it Brahmastra, wants to kill the womb of Mother Uttra. Means the child in the womb of Mother Uttra. But Krishna, Krishna glanced, oh, in nectarine glance, over that child in the womb of Mother Uttra. So what Parikshit Maharaj got is the blessed life. Blessed by the beautiful glance of Krishna. The nectarine glance of Krishna. That's the blessed life. When you, you know, sometimes many people, they come across some big accident. Almost about to die. And the truck hit your car. And the car totally smashed. You got little scratches and went to hospital. and You go to hospital and everything is cured in just one week. Don't take that thing easy. That means blessed life. Var prapt jivan. Some boon of any sadhu. There was one 
disciple of Shri Guru Dev. Now he is no more. But in his young age, <coughs> almost like 18 years in Mathura, yeah. he was on his third floor. He was doing something and he fell from that third floor on the ground. And he got totally brain hemorrhage. And uh, his parents took him to hospital for urgent surgery. And doctor said, oh, impossible. Because all his veins, everything is damaged. We can try, but no hope. We are telling you in advance. But this family was so much devoted to Gurudev. They helped financially. They helped Gurudev so many times. For buying the deities in the temple, for construction, for many reasons. Many times they have the Guru. So when they came with this request, this plea, <coughs> Gurudev said, don't worry. I am going to chant for him. You all go and you all chant the name of Krishna. Krishna is protector. <coughs> so they start chanting and Gurudev also meditating on him. And Gurudev said, he is going to come back, don't worry. Because they have served Gurudev in so many projects. And it's not about money, it's about the heart. It's about the, you know, the service attitude, the service mood. It's not about the money. You give one dollar, one euro, you give hundred euro, you give one million euro. But what intent is there, that's most important. If the service mood is there or not, but they were so soft heart devotees with the intent to just serve Gurudev, not getting acknowledged, not getting clapping, nothing. Very humble family. If they're hearing me online, they can understand. Everything I'm telling truth. Very glorious family. Supported Gurudev in his difficult time when there was no finances in the Mathura They served with all finances. Every festival sponsored, deity sponsored, as many temples Guru they built, they sponsored the deities. <clears throat> so when Guru they said, Don't worry, he will be back. They all started chanting, and Guru they also prayed for him to Krishna. And surprisingly, <laughs> a miracle happened. Even doctors were surprised. We've never seen any patient in our life. We are operating his, you know, his body and there is no chance for him to live, but he survived. He survived. So this is called a new birth or a blessed life. But then the other which is called cursed life. Vritasu knew he got cursed. And who cursed, who cursed Vritasur? Parvati Devi. You know this? Little background. <coughs> Very beautiful pastime in Bhagavata. Must read this. King Chitra Ketu with some heavenly girls in airplane singing the glories of the Lord. In airplane without pilot and big airplane and he saw Mahadev Shiva is sitting with Parvati on his lap and embracing her husband and she was giving lecture to the rishis <laughs> so many rishis thousands of rishis are sitting there and Shiva with his wife on his lap and with a tight embrace and he is speaking Hari Katha, the glories of the Lord. And Chitra Ketu Maharaj, airplane with all the heavenly girls, he pointed out to Shiva, Oh Mahadev, what is this etiquette? You giving embrace to your wife and speaking Hari Katha? <coughs> what is this etiquette to speak Hari Katha? And Shiva just smiled. 
She only smiled. <laughs> but Parvati. <laughs> you know, mothers are like that. She came forward and she said, Hey, Kritra Ketu, how dare you point out to my husband? All these sages sitting here have no objection. Are you pointing out to my husband? You know the glories of Shiva? He has no lust. Even I'm embracing him. He is purely delivering Harikatha. He has no lust in him. He conquered lust. I curse you because you have this demonic mood. I curse you. You become demon. And Chitra Ketu Maharaj, his folded hand, folded hands, he accepted curse. Okay, mother. If you want to curse me, accept. If you want to bless me, I accept. That's the symptom and quality of a devotee. Seeing all circumstances as equal, as same. Sorry. Yeah. We actually, honestly, we get immediately bewildered when unfavorable circumstance comes. Agitated, bewildered, right? And when there is favorable circumstance, we get really pure glory. When we get glorified, then we become very good. <laughs> <laughs> and when we get a little criticized, like, oh. we feel sad. So I heard in one lecture, question was asked, why people criticize me for mistakes which are not true? Why I'm getting criticized for the mistakes which I never done? Then the Sadhu answered, similarly, when you don't deserve anything good, you get glorified everywhere. That time you didn't object it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do get glorified so many times. Even though we don't have qualities. And we know our positioning. But we get glorification. And that time we just, yes, I say, no, no, I'm humble. <laughs> 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 That's all, but it feels good. You know, I embrace that glorification, it's so nice. <laughs> and go back to my room and then, wow, today, 100 people clap for me. <laughs> nice sleep. And if I hear something, can't sleep all night. So as we get criticized without any reason, we also get glorified without any reason. How to balance this? That's the test. Actually, it is so easy to say this, but it's true with all of us. A sadhu means one who takes both situations equally. Pritasur, with folded hands, he accepted that curse from Parvati, <coughs> the concert of Shiva. But Shiva chastised his wife. Why you came in between me and him? He is my god brother. He is just joking with me and I am just joking with him. It's not that Vritasur, sorry, it's not that Chitra Ketu was serious about this point. That pointing me, why I am speaking Harikatha to the sages with my wife sitting on my lap. He was just joking with me as my godmother. Why godmother? Because Shiva also worships Sankarshan and Vritasur also worships Sankarshan. So they are godmother. We are godmothers. So, why you came in between? And immediately Mahadev said, Narayan para na sarva kutas vivayati swarg apavarg moksh tadatmanam Narayan para, those who are Narayan para means devoted to Narayan, devoted to Krishna. Narayan para sarva na kutas vivayati they never fearful of any condition and they take heaven, hell and liberation equally. 
So this verse also proves what is the position of liberation. Very insignificant compared to heaven in Swarg and Narak. With this verse, Jeev Goswami Pad in Sandarvas is established in his mind. Comparing Swarg and Narak compared to liberation. This is the position of liberation. Swarg, Apubarga, Moksh, three together. Swarg, Narak, Apubarga, equally. <coughs> so he got this cursed body as a demon. But all those prayers and stutis, all his bhakti from previous life is still with him. As Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Kaunteha Pratijani Name Bhakta Pranashati. Comparison again with Bhagavad Gita. O son of Kunti, declared my devotee never, never destroyed. So Chitra Ketu Maharaj Bhakti, even though now he is in our demon body, <coughs> but his bhakti is still with him. And therefore he is praying to Indra, come and kill me. Come and kill me. I want to die. Why you want to die? I got cursed body. I want to get rid of this body. Because very learned. Learned means one who don't lament. One who don't lament, dying. That person is called learned person. One who don't lament or don't fear of dying. Because Vritasura know very well, I'm going to get a body again. My bhakti can never be destroyed. And I'm why but I have to live with this demon body. Similarly, we in this conditioned body, there's so many desires. So many desires of sense enjoyment, so many desires of fulfilling the urges of mind, so many desires to get famous, so many desires to get pratishta, so many desires to accumulate wealth, so much. This is again a condition, a cursed body. What is the point of lamenting for if we are dying today or tomorrow? We hear a little sound on the roof and he is going to fall. Yes. What if I die? I am going to get a new body again. Because na jayate mriyate vakadhachim. Soul never dies. No one can burn soul. No one can kill soul. No one can cut soul. And now I'm going to get a new one. <laughs> <again. laughs> really? <clears throat> That's the Nadu Shochanti Pandita. Krishna's sarcasm on Arjuna. Nanu Shochanti Pandita. You're speaking like a pandit, like a learned person, but you're speaking like a coward person. What is, who is a pandit in the temple? One who do puja is pandit. We simply call them Panditji, give me prasad. Panditji, can you give me flower? What is a pandit? Day and night he is very sad and morose. Why? No income today. Any person worshipping the temple is pandit. Pandit is one who very equal in all circumstances. That person is called learned. Said so, we have to understand, I'm including myself also. After speaking Bhagavad Gita and after hearing Bhagavad Gita, now this is the time to realize Bhagavad Gita. I also want to become learned. And what that mean? No matter what comes. On the way of my life, I have to treat everything, every situation equally. Then, according to Krishna and according to the words of Bhagavad Gita, I will learn it. Otherwise, I am unintelligent. Lamenting for something which is temporary in nature, 
Let's not pandita. Let's not love him. Shukdev Goswami told Parikshit Maharaj, give up this animal life mentality that you're going to die one day. This animal mentality. So, Nanu Shoshanti Pandita. Vritasur. Anyway, there's so much more to say, to think. I was on a competition with Vijay. <laughs> He spoke two hours, I was thinking I'm not less. Param Vishnani Vartante. This is formula. <coughs> so, <coughs> Rita Sur, coming to the point now. Param Vishnani Vartante. He, in one of his prayers, the four prayers, he said, Four prayers of Rita Come on, Krishna. Jashri. Yes. Um, I only know about the cow and cat, but I don't know shloka. Okay, tell me of that one. Just like uh, cow. No, no, words. No, I don't know the words. Um, That's my problem. I don't know how to say that. So just like? Like a cow. Just like a cow is waiting whole day for a calf to return. Calf is waiting for the calf. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry for that. No, no, it's okay. I'm not here to like judge anyone or test anyone. You just... Yeah. This is teaching. So something which I'm not able to say, and I will write down, because I want to learn this. Ananta? Tarun? Anyone? Rara is going to go. She's supposed to be Brahmachari. Achha, bolo. Param Dishtani Vartanti. I know you know the four verses, but I'm you know what I want to say the what I'm focusing on. Meaning. So Pritasar is saying in the second verse of his prayers, Nanaka Krishtam Nachapara Mishtam. I don't want to become the king of this planet. I don't want to become, I don't want to get the throne of Dhruva. Nanak Krishna. Nanak Krishna means I don't want to get the throne of Dhruva. Nacha Paramishtam or becoming the king of the world. Paramishtam means the throne of Brahma. So, we are saying I don't want to. Get throne of Dhruva or the throne of Brahma. Dhruva is coming in. First Dhruva, then Brahma. So it's coming down, down, down like this. Na na prishtam, na cha paramishtam, na sarbhomam. What is sarbhomam? The whole world. Become the ruler of the whole world. Na sadhi patyam. Na sadhi patyam. Also, I don't want to become the ruler of the hellish planet. The ruler of the hellish planet. Na yogi siddhi apunar bhavamba. I also don't want yoga, like mystic powers. Apunar bhavamba, or even mukti. So when you supply the Hare Kaksha, when I am experiencing this separation from you. Yes. Very nice. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> Two getting claps. I am speaking so many words. No one clapping for me. <laughs> Prishtam, na chaparmishtam, na sarbhomam, na rasadipatyam, na yogsiddhipa punar bhavamba, samanjasyatam vira kamshasi. Imagine, in a battlefield, 
when you are having fight with someone. Mode of ignorance is so prominent there. Eyes red and you cursing each other. In that environment, Vrita Sur is uh, praying to the Lord. And Indra was shaking to hear this. What is saying? A demon is saying this? We are supposed to say this. Indra is thinking. Vrita Sur is saying, Na na Krishna. I don't want the throne of Dhruva, which never get perished or destroyed even at time of destruction. So that's the hierarchy is coming down now. I don't, na Parmeshtam, I don't want the throne of Brahma. Na Sarbhomam, I don't want to become the ruler of the planet Earth. Na Rasadipatyam, I don't want to become the ruler of hellish planet. Na Yog Siddhi, I don't want any misperfection in, uh, uh, yeah? Mystic powers. And I don't even want liberation. Param Nivartanti. Means all these are lower taste. The pollution of Dhru Maharaj, lower taste. The pollution of Brahma Loka, lower taste. Become the king of planet earth or the demigods, lower taste. Everything is lower. Lower taste, lower taste, lower taste. In comparison with what he asks later, Samajasya Vira I only want separation. I want to feel, I want to get myself born in that separation from you, O oh my Lord. He made the mood of separation high and superior in comparison with all these thrones. Kajam Vichinke Api Divyaratnam. These are all broken pieces of glasses. These are lower taste. Param drishta nivartante. These are lower taste, lower taste, lower taste. Tick, 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 tick. And what is the higher taste? Feeling separation from you. Oh my God. That's the higher taste. Why this higher taste? Tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare.